you've ever blasted a 300 milliamp hour one cell lipo battery with five amps, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. One of the most important components of an FPV drone is the battery. These days, most drones use lithium polymer batteries, or LiPos for short. And if you're first getting into FPV, it can be really daunting to try and learn the ins and outs of LiPo batteries in a way that won't burn your house down. And that's why today I want to go over some basic rules for lithium polymer batteries so that they last longer, perform better, and most importantly, don't burn your house down. Let's get right into it. As we know, all batteries are defined by two main things, voltage and capacity. LiPos are really no different except for the fact that we think of them in terms of cells as opposed to one main unit with one voltage. So to get more powerful batteries, all we do is wire some LiPo cells together in series, which produces a higher voltage pack. And series is what that little S stands for on your LiPo pack. So 1S means one cell, 2S means two cell, and so on. To really understand LiPo batteries and how to care for them properly, there's four main voltages that you need to memorize. 4.2, 3.8, 3.7 and 3.2. So we're going to take a minute and dive a little bit deeper into each of these and why they're important. Let's start with 4.2. When a LiPo cell is fully charged, that voltage rests at 4.2 volts. So the max voltage of your LiPo pack when it's fully charged is that 4.2 volts multiplied by however many cells you have. So if it's a one cell, the max charge is 4.2 volts. If it's a two cell, it's 8.4 volts and so on and so forth. This is the do not exceed limit when charging. Do not go above 4.2 volts per cell. Now next up is 3.8 volts. This is the voltage that's most commonly accepted to be a good storage voltage for a LiPo. Now when I say storage, I'm not talking about one or two days. I'm talking about weeks or months, a little bit longer time frame. And you want to store them at this voltage because if you store it fully charged, it degrades the battery. And likewise, if you store it fully discharged, that also degrades the battery. So we pick somewhere kind of in the middle that has been proven to make batteries last a little bit longer in long-term storage. So next up is 3.7 volts, and that represents the standard or nominal voltage of a lithium polymer cell. You'll encounter this mostly when you're shopping for LiPo batteries. Say you're looking for a 6S battery, it'll list a voltage as 22.2 volts. Well, that's just 3.7 times 6, 22.2. It's just a way to standardize the voltage so that manufacturers are all talking about the same thing. And finally, we have 3.2 volts. 3.2 volts represents a fully discharged LiPo cell. So if your LiPo is sitting at 3.2 volts right now, yes, it does still have 3.2 volts. That is greater than zero, that's true. But if you discharge it past 3.2 volts, you risk doing permanent damage to the battery. Now, a lot of the diminished capacity and swelling of LiPo cells that I personally have seen in the past are because I have discharged them far too low. So make sure to not discharge your LiPos below this 3.2 volts per cell limit. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the capacity and the C rating of a battery. Let's first talk about capacity and how that's measured and what it actually means. The capacity of a drone battery is typically given in milliamp hours. And what that means is theoretically, the battery could provide X amount of current for one hour. So for example, I have the 6S 1100 milliamp hour battery. And what that means is it could theoretically provide 1100 milliamps for one hour or 1.1 amps for one hour. And the battery provides that current at the nominal voltage of the battery pack. In this case, it's 6S, so it's 22.2 volts. And when it's providing this power, it is doing so all the way from 4.2 volts per cell down to 3.2 volts per cell, or the fully discharged voltage. That represents the usable voltage range of the battery. You might also see capacity listed as watt hours, but it essentially is saying the same exact thing. It's telling you a capacity. But for watt hours, the way you get that is you multiply the voltage times the amp hours. Now in this case, the voltage is 22.2, we already know that and the amp hours are 1.1 amp hours or 1100 milliamp hours. So 22.2 volts times 1.1 amp hours equals 24.42 watt hours. It's just another way of representing capacity. And the other number you might see on a battery pack is a C rating. And this is where it gets kind of confusing. The C rating is a way of describing how much current can either flow into or out of a battery. So as you probably guessed, that means how much current you can draw from a battery and how much current you can charge a battery with. 
So when you look at most drone batteries, they'll say something like 50C or 100C. So if we look at our example again of this battery, this says 100C. And what that means is it'll provide 100 times the capacity of that battery in current. So if the capacity is 1.1 amp hours or 1100 milliamp hours, it can theoretically provide 100 times 1.1 amp hours, which equals 110 amps. Now, if it sounds like that's too good to be true, that's too many amps, that's probably because it is. These C ratings for discharge current are famously over-exaggerated. And they do this to make their pack look better and stand out from the rest and make you buy it. So just be aware of that. I thought I would point that out. When you're buying batteries, always read reviews and ask other people you know that might have these batteries instead of just relying on the C rating that's listed on the pack because a lot of the time it is not accurate. So now that you have a little bit better understanding of how LiPo's work and how the chemistry works and the limitations of it, we can get into how to use them and how to care for them properly to make them last longer. First up is charge rate. As you may have guessed, charge rate means how fast you can charge the battery. Remember that C rating from before when we were talking about discharge current? Well, the same thing applies when you're talking about charge current. And with charge current, the C rating is even more important. So if you recall on this 6S battery, it was 100 C, that was discharge, right? So 1 C would be 1.1 amps or 1100 milliamps. And unless the battery explicitly states on the label or the instructions that you can charge at higher than 1 C, always charge at 1C. Do not go higher unless it explicitly says that you can. So assuming you charge at 1C, the battery should theoretically take exactly one hour to go from all the way empty to all the way full, 3.2 volts to 4.2 volts per cell. Now, if your battery says you can charge at 2 or 3C, you sure can do that, but you have to understand that the faster you charge a battery, the more it degrades it. Everything we do, whether it's charging or discharging a LiPo, all plays a role in degrading the battery faster. If all you do is charge at 1C and draw current at 1C, your battery will last for a very, very long time. But if you're pulling 50C, 100C, and you're charging at 2 or 3C every time, the battery is not gonna last as long. So you just gotta keep in mind, even if your battery says you can do two or three C, that doesn't mean you have to. It'll last a lot longer if you just charge at one C. For me personally, since I do bash the shit out of my quads, the one thing I can routinely control is the charge rate. Why would I unnecessarily blast my batteries that are already being punished with two or three C charge when I could just safely do it with 1C and make them last a little bit longer. Another important thing to realize about LiPos is unless you have a one cell LiPo, you will always have two leads coming out of the battery. If we look at our example again, you have this main power lead. That's obviously what you plug into whatever you're using the battery for. And then you got this guy here, this weird looking plug. That's the balance plug. That's how your charger ensures that each of the cells in the battery is charged to a level that's relatively close to the others. You could just plug your battery into a power source and just charge it to the correct voltage, but the battery would have no way of knowing what cell is charged to what voltage and you might end up overcharging a cell. Using a balancing charger eliminates that problem and ensures that all the cells are of a similar voltage. That way you don't end up with overcharged cells and you don't end up with one cell wearing out faster than the others. You really want all the cells to degrade equally at the same time if you can. Balancing is a good way to make that happen. Now lastly, I wanna bring up storage of LiPos and I think this is a very underrated one. I feel like a lot of people don't actually do this and that's why their batteries degrade so quickly. I used to be really, really bad at this. I would leave them fully charged or I would leave them just dead for like six months. I wouldn't touch them at all. Then next time I use them, they don't work. And then I finally realized after spending probably a couple hundred dollars that you do actually need to store them a certain way. You can't just set them somewhere and forget about them. To be fair, it is really easy to get caught up in just other life stuff and forget about taking care of the batteries. Like maybe you planned to go out on the weekend, but you didn't. So now you have... 10 charged batteries just sitting in your bag. Or maybe you did go out and you just forgot to plug them back on the charger to charge them to a storage voltage. It happens, stuff gets in the way, I understand that, but to get the most life and best performance out of your batteries, you really do have to put them into storage voltage. And as we mentioned before, that voltage for storage mode is about 3.8 volts per cell. It's not an exact number if you're 0.01 or 0.02 off, either way, it's not gonna make 
you know, a huge difference, but you want to be around that number. I like to be between 3.8 and like 3.85 volts per cell. That seems to be a good range. It's given me good results in the past. My general rule of thumb that seems to work for me is if I know I'm not going to be flying for two or more days, I will either discharge or charge all of my batteries up to that 3.8 volts per cell voltage. Almost all chargers that I know of on the market these days have a storage mode and it costs you nothing to use, so just use it. So I know it's frustrating, I know it's hard to remember, but just try to have the discipline to put them into storage mode because it really will make them last a lot longer. All right, you guys, well, that's gonna do it for this one. I know this topic is very in depth and it is kind of confusing, so don't feel bad if you're still kind of struggling to understand. I know it took me a while and I've seen a lot of my friends struggle through the same thing, so just don't feel bad, you're not alone. But if you learned something today and you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below, hit that subscribe button, and as always, feel free to leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys in the community. I think it's important that we all help each other grow as we learn new things here. So until next time, keep ripping, keep crashing, and keep learning.